actually a really good introduction into what I'm going to talk about because what we did um, was a book sprint, so thank you for that. Um, just to introduce myself, um, I work for an organisation called Open Oil um, and we do things like, uh, we're basically trying to improve management of the oil industry so that citizens of oil rich countries get to see the benefits of their natural resources. Um, so there are countries all over Africa, South America who are horribly poor but their governments have lots and lots of money or they've been funding dictators or things like that so we're trying to to change the way to give more mon more of that money back to people um, so we do this by uh, publishing and also research into public policy and just a quick introduction to a couple of things uh, we produce oil wiki guides um, so using media wiki software to pull together information on the oil industry um, we also pull out the information from these oil wikis into books, self-publish them, and go to countries where these issues are really relevant, such as Iraq, Libya, Colombia, and run workshops on how to edit the wikis, um, as well as producing a, another data guide to publicly available information. Um, so the problem that we tried to address with this project, just to give a brief introduction, was uh, contract transparency and general transparency in the oil industry. So. Um, you think of oil, you think of secrecy and corruption, and it's generally thought of as closed. Um, well, I work for someone called Open Oil, um, and we're trying to change that. Uh, one way that, one emerging norm of best practice at the moment is contract transparency. So that means when a government decides to publish all of their contracts, the oil contracts that they've signed with international oil companies. Um, so we tried to change this with a book sprint and I'm going to explain how we did that and a little bit I think there's quite a lot of crossover with the the music sprint um, and then more generally how open business models can and are changing the oil industry um, so why firstly why are contracts so important um, well you know, so basically um, contracts decide things that can make a huge amount of difference to the world so just to give you an example of how huge the oil industry is, uh, foreign aid to Africa in 2009 was worth $44 billion. Um, now, next I'm going to give you a figure of the value of oil exports from Africa. So just exports, not the total value that was produced, but just exports was worth $333 billion. So that's many more times the value of aid. And if you imagine how how different the world could look if all of that money was used where it should be for the citizens. Um, so contract transparency, contracts are very important. I think after hearing that talk, I kind of want to focus more on the, the open source methods that we've used. So I'm just going to skip over that for now. Um, so there are now seven jurisdictions around the world that are publishing their contracts. Um, but once you've got them, you've got a pile of papers. And, and unless you have a law degree, which I don't, they make absolutely no sense. So uh, we did a book sprint. Um, bringing an open strategy to a closed industry. Um, and we brought together a group of 10 people from around the world, and this included a government negotiator from Sierra Leone, a civil society activist from Uganda, um, someone negotiating contracts now for the government of Liberia, um, and three uh, oil industry experts, so people with 30 years of experience have had an over-influence. When there have been high oil prices, it's been the companies that have been benefiting from this. Um, and we work on the model that actually companies, the oil industry is going to evolve into something more of a, a service industry. So a government should pay an in, a government should pay a company to do a particular role, and they should make profit. That's fine. They're a company. That's what they need to do, and that's how the economy works. Um, but then, if there's particularly high oil prices, it's the government that should be benefiting from the particularly high oil prices. And this is something called. The, the excess money that you can make on top of norm, normal profits is called rent. Um, so we're trying to shift the majority of this rent to countries where it belongs rather than governments. Um, open source models and things like publishing contracts and opening up the world of the oil industry is also really helpful for governments who have who are new to this industry. So often they're kind of negotiating against companies that have years and years and years of experience. And if you're a new uh, government to this, you don't have any experience, you're coming into this completely new and if everything's all closed you don't know what's, what's normal, what your neighbouring country agreed to, what you should expect, but with this publishing contracts and opening up ways of 
uh, ways of communicating and ways that the industry is working, it means that governments can learn from other governments and see what mistakes they made or what things they agree with and then they can make a more informed decision and go on in a more level playing field. Um, and I guess more, uh, more generally, if, if the oil industry is run in a more fair way for the citizens, it allows a more rational development of other energy systems, renewables, and how we're going to get past our dependence on hydrocarbons. Um, also things like oil subsidies. Um, there are many countries in the world that, that subsidize use of hydrocarbons, and because of this, uh, people in the country, because it's so cheap, they use it in a very inefficient way. And this isn't good for anyone. Um, but if this policy of subsidies is rethought, and this is one thing that we're working on at the moment at Open Oil, policy papers on uh, rethinking energy subsidies, this could encourage a more efficient use of hydrocarbons and a, more, a smoother transition to renewables and you know, more efficient, well, better, less environmentally damaging uh, ways of running our economy and our energy. Um, so that's that's all. But I'd be interesting to hear how interested to hear how if there's any other comments that you have from the music sprint and yeah, or any other comments and questions. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. Any any questions or comments? No. Please. <laughs> Go on. I really like the idea of the sprint, and I I think uh, it was quite interesting because you brought people together who would never work in this particular way. Mm. We did our sprint in, in seven days and everyone was used to um, working in this way but over a long, longer period of time so I don't think there was as much of a difficulty yeah, in getting people's heads around it. But uh, uh, probably the, the biggest question is how do you make money from it? It's the question that, yeah. that comes most to us. How do, you, how do you make money from this particular type of work? And I just wondered if, if you had any, like I mean, one of the things we were looking at was al alternative sources of income, mm -hmm. other ways besides just selling the book. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, uh, being sponsored by, a, uh, getting some sort of sponsorship from a civil so society organization, from governments, or just to, to put something out there. I, mean, I wonder even if the oil industry would be interesting in sponsoring something like this as a way to make them look better and would you accept uh, something like this? Well, actually, so this this project, kind of unlike yours, it was funded, um, but just the production, just the, the actual sprint was funded by GIZ, um, the development arm of the German government, um, and a media development organization. So we've kind of agreed with them that we will be running training courses for journalists, for their particular groups of journalists on this topic. Um, so yeah, the, the sprint was funded through that, but our main issue now is how to, we don't want to sell it, this book, because people gave their time for free, and it's really, it could really change the way in which, well, the industry is managed if it's used in the right way. Um, See, so, I mean, yeah, the training courses have been one way that we've thought of. Um, we originally thought, you know, even something like a freemium, you know, where you kind of let some things out for free, and then if you want to get the whole material you have to pay but again that didn't seem very in keeping with the ethos of of this open strategy open source book sprint um, so at the moment that's that's something that I'm looking into um, and we've had as I said lots of interest from civil society groups who want to have their own workshops and we've said like if you want to go look for funding from you know big I don't know government de development agencies like the Norwegians have a a development arm called Oil for Development, um, and there are some other organisations like this. Uh, and we, yeah, we we're kind of looking for civil society groups to partner up with and look for funding together on this kind of topic. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's kind of because we do lots of things. Like everything that we do, at Open Oil is based around open source and like the wikis, and we produce kind of free briefings to countries when when big things are happening. 
and we just send this all out for free and we've and we've kind of amassed quite a lot of intellectual property now and I'd be interested to hear the the speaker battle um, any more uh, thoughts on on monetizing that because I guess every organization or anyone doing this needs to, to find some way to, to make profit out of it or just just to make enough to keep it going would be fine also um, yeah if they're gonna carry on do it and not have it as a hobby so yeah I guess we'll hear more from that at the speaker battle hopefully all right cool thank you <laughs>